Hi, my name is Hannah Lee and I'm a PhD candidate at Stanford. Today I'll be talking about my work on experimental design in two-sided platforms. And this is joint work with my advisors, Ramesh Johari and Gabriel Weintraub. So these days, platforms everywhere rely on experiments to help improve the product. Before they launch a new feature, they want to know that this feature improves some metric that they care about and how much improves this metric. And so oftentimes they'll run an experiment to get to test the user's response to this new feature before they launch it platform wide. There are a lot of benefits to experiments. It allows teams to make uh, decisions based on data instead of solely on intuition, and it enables teams to test a broader range of ideas without incurring as much risk. That's why platforms everywhere, uh, large platforms everywhere, um, experiments are just ubiquitous across all these platforms. The goal of the platform is to estimate the global treatment effect, which is the difference in some metric between a world where everyone uh, sees this new feature and the world where no one sees this new feature. And typically what platforms will do is randomize users into treatment and control. Treatment will receive this new feature, control will not. And they'll estimate this global treatment effect just by looking at the difference in the average behavior among these treatment and control groups. Um, in most of these cases, this does give you an unbiased estimate of the global treatment effect. However, oftentimes in online marketplaces, this is not the case, and this is actually a biased estimate. And that's because a lot of these online, a lot of these two-sided marketplaces violate this no interference assumption. And this no interference assumption states that the treatment, the intervention that you give to one individual does not affect the behavior of another individual. Once it does, you can have biased estimates. And you can kind of see why this in, uh, assumption might be violated on a marketplace. Marketplaces are inherently connected. People are buying from each other. People are competing with each other. And this leads to interference across users. Um, previous work has already shown that um, this interference does create a bias in experiments. And this bias can actually be as large as the treatment effect itself. And so, in other words, words, this is a very large problem for people trying to implement an experiment. Let's walk through a toy example here to see where, how exactly this interference leads to a bias. Consider a toy example of an online labor platform where we have one freelancer and two customers. The platform's considering a new treatment where they show the freelancer's previous job completion rate. They run a customer side experiment They'll randomize um, uh, customer A into treatment. They'll see this job completion rate, and customer B will be in control and will not see it. Suppose, for the sake of this example, that the feature makes the, cu the treatment customer more likely to book than if they were in control. So now customer A uh, wants to book the freelancer. They book the freelancer, and this freelancer becomes busy for some amount of time. Now when customer B looks at the market, there's nothing left for them to book. And if we were to estimate the global treatment effect based solely on the, on the outcomes here, this would lead to an underestimate of the bookings and global control and an overestimate of the bookings and global treatment. And so something similar happens here and you also if you run a listing site experiment, which, which is something um, I'll talk about later. But again, because of this interference, because of these competition dynamics, we will have a biased estimate. In this work, um, so existing literature has already shown that the bias can be very large, but there's no consensus on how to minimize this bias. So in this work, we first develop a theoretical framework that allows us to compare across experiment designs and say which experiment designs perform better. We then find that the relative performance of these commonly used designs depends heavily on market balance conditions, supply and demand imbalance. Finally, we use the intuition um, from the supply and demand imbalance to propose a more general experiment design um, called based on two-sided randomization that reduces bias. So I'll jump straight into the model here. Consider a two-sided, we model a two-sided platform where customers book listings. Um, so here they'll book listings for some amount of time and the listings will become available again. Uh, this is, uh, but a lot of the insights that we find here, we think can be generalized to listings or to, sorry, to marketplaces where customers also buy listings. So we, uh, for the sake of this presentation, we can consider this online labor platform where listings 
are freelancers and customers are coming to the market looking to hire. There are end listings and freelancers and each freelancer uh, listing can have a type. Uh, so this type can represent something like experience level or location or even something like an experiment treatment condition. Now each time a listing can either be available or booked. Now customers will arrive to the marketplace and when they arrive, they see a set of available listings. They'll choose from their listings a consideration set. Um, and then where, whether or not, so whether or not each listing enters a consideration set is determined by some uh, parameter alpha that depends on both the customer type and the listing type. The point of this alpha is to model um, search and recommendation algorithms on these platforms. Once they have a consideration set, they have different utility, a customer has different utilities for each type of listing and a utility for the outside option and will make a booking decision based on the multinomial logit model. And so in this case, they choose a green listing, um, colors represent type, and this listing will be unavailable for some time. Now note here that this model captures competition between listings. Once you look at the customer's consideration set, if you, make, if you increase the utility of one listing, that decreases the probability that they pick a different kind of listing. And so um, competition, marketplace competition shows up here. Now, once a listing is booked, the listing becomes unavailable for some exponential time. Um, this time can depend on listing type. What's important is that when later customers arrive, this listing might still be unavailable. And so that means there's competition between customers. This is the competition that showed up in our earlier example, this online labor platform, that actually caused the bias in the overall estimate. And so we captured these effects in our model. So all the dynamics that I've described up until this point induce a continuous time Markov chain that we can then use to study um, experiments on these platforms. Now, we consider interventions that change a, custom, a customer's choice probability, um, for example, changing their utility that they have or different listings. We can use this Markov chain model to study system dynamics in a global treatment world where everyone sees this intervention, a global control world where no one sees this intervention, and an experiment world where some subset of the population sees this intervention. What the platform wants to estimate is the global treatment effect, which is the difference in the rate of bookings between a global treatment world and a global control world. However, they can't actually observe these two worlds at the same time, and so what they'll do is run an experiment to try to estimate this quantity. However, in a real platform or, or in an uh, empirical study, you can really only observe one of these three worlds at a time, and so you can't actually know what your estimator is in an experiment and the ground truth global treatment effect um, in global treatment global control worlds. However, in our model, we can actually observe what would, what would have happened in all three worlds. And so this allows us to measure um, the estimate that would have shown up in an experiment, as well as know what the ground truth global treatment effect is. And so this allows us to quantify the bias in an experiment. Um, so this is a little bit of an interlude. Um, everything I've said so far is how we want to use this experiment, uh, how we want to use this model. However, there's the difficulty that this continuous time markup chain is just difficult to an analyze due to all the randomness and customer choice and listing availability. And so we make progress here by moving to a mean field limit where we scale the number of listings uh, to infinity and then we look at the proportion of available listings of each type. Um, and so we look at the mass of, of the available listings. Um, and then in this mean field model, we can show that uh, we have very nice control over the behavior of this model. We can show that it evolves according to system ordinary differential equations, and we can characterize the trajectory and the unique steady state of the system. Um, this we do using a Lyapunov argument. And so we can actually say what happens to this large market limit in steady state. And furthermore, we also show that this um, finite Markov chain model converges uniformly in probability to this ODE solution as we scale up the market. And so this is this uh, large market limit, this mean field limit is a reasonable approximation to use for a large market.
And this is just formalizing um, some of what I've already said on the previous slide. But basically from here and out, I'll be talking about re mostly results in the mean field model. Now, jumping back to the world of experiment designs and platforms, platforms will commonly use two different types of experiments here. One um, is the customer side experiment and the other is the listing side experiment. So in the customer side experiment, they randomize customers into treatment and control. And depending on the customer's uh, condition, they'll see the market differently. They'll have different utilities for this market, for different items. In a listing side experiment, listings are randomized into treatment and control. Um, so in the early, earlier example, the treatment listings would be shown with this uh, job completion rate, but the control listings wouldn't be. Now a customer who comes will see some mix of both treatment and control listings. And for these experiments, there's a very natural associated estimator um, uh, for each of these experiments. It's just looking at the difference in the means between the two treatment and control groups. Now, the first thing that we find is that the bias of um, these estimators depends heavily on market balance. So in this plot on the right, we're showing how the bias changes in a customer side experiment as you increase the relative demand in the marketplace. You can see it's, the bias is very large when there's a lot of demand, but it decreases when demand is uh, smaller. And so we prove this as the theorem that in steady state, the customer side estimate is actually unbiased in the demand constraint limit when there's very little demand. The intuition here is that interference arises when customers compete for the same listings. Um, and so when one customer books a listing, it's unavailable for the next customer. However, when demand is low, listings will regenerate quickly enough that by the time the next customer comes, all listings will be available. And so there's no, actually no competition between customers. And so this is a pretty intuitive result. Um, and it's, an, it's natural to ask like whether something similar happens with the listing side experiment. And we actually find that no, that doesn't happen with the listing side experiment. In fact, the opposite happens. That a listing side experiment has higher bias when demand is low and lower bias when demand is high. And so we prove the theorem here that says that the listing side estimate is unbiased in the supply constraint limit, the other limit um, where customer side uh, experiments actually have high bias. So I won't go into the intuition here. There is some pretty clean intuition as well, but for the sake of time, I'll skip over this. Now, what we've seen here is that both types of experiment designs have their benefits in different regimes of market balance. And so, Kind of drawing on this, we really want to utilize a, another type of experiment that draws on the advantages of both types of experiments. And to do this, we define what we call two-sided randomization. Here, both customers and listings are randomized into treatment and control, but the intervention only applies when both the customer and the listing are in treatment. Um, and so, for example, if you're a treatment customer, um, in the online labor platform, you'll only see the previous job completion rates for a listing and that listing is also assigned to be in treatment. And so this generalizes both listing side randomization um, and customer side randomization, depending on like whether or not you put all customers into treatment or all listings into treatment. Um, but more importantly, this is a more flexible design that actually allows us to interpolate between customer side designs and listing side designs. Um, and so we can actually say something like when demand is low, when demand is lower, we can run a two-sided experiment that looks closer to a customer side experiment um, and actually interpret between the two, uh, one single side types. This experiment also allows us to observe different competition effects that we can use to heuristically debias here. Um, for more details on that, I will point you to the paper, but essentially these four cells, differences between um, these four cells can allow you to see how much competition that there is between customers and how much competition there is between listings. So based off of these insights, we define a new type of experiment design, this two-sided experiment design. And then we can show that this new design is actually unbiased in both limits and both demand constrained and supply constrained limits. 
And furthermore, with these heuristic correction terms, these competition correction terms, um, it actually performs pretty well in intermediate regimes of moderate balance as well. Now, everything I've talked about up until this point has been talking about bias, but of course, there's a very important issue of the variance of these estimators. Um, this is particularly important um, because a lot of the heuristics that platforms use right now to mitigate bias in these experiments, in these marketplace experiments, do cause a huge increase in variance. Um, however, what we show um, using simulations, uh, what we can show in our model is that this two-sided design actually does not, it does not cause a huge increase in variance. And the variance here is actually comparable to those of the customer side and listing side design. Um, so in the plot on the right, we have the, the standard error each three of the three estimators. And so just as a note, when we're looking at the mean field model, um, this mean field model doesn't have any variance because we're looking at an infinite number of listings and customers. And so all of these like variance results are actually done, are, are actually analyzed through simulations in the finite market model, uh, finite markup chain model. And so the takeaway here is that two-sided estimators seem to offer reductions in bias without causing a significant increase in variance. To sum up, um, in this work, we were able to create a theoretical framework that allows us to compare the performance of different experiment designs and estimators. We find that this, the, the bias in these different estimators depends heavily on supply and demand imbalance, the economic conditions in the marketplace, and that there are very intuitive economic reasons as well for why this happens. Finally, Using these insights, we propose a more general two-sided randomization design that reduces bias across a range of supply and demand imbalance. There's a lot of future work to be done here. Um, we wanna collaborate with platforms to implement some of these, some of these designs. Um, there's also potential in using these two-sided designs to heuristically de-bias one-sided experiments. There's broader ranges, broader classes of two-sided experiments that we could all look at. Um, there's, it's a very rich area. I think a lot of future work to be done. So in this work so far, we've really, really highlighted how biases arise and the behavior of such biases. And there's basically a lot of interesting work to be done in leveraging these insights for practical platform use.